Let's get into the topics for the week. First of all, unfortunately, I'm glad we had some fun at the beginning there um, because uh, so sad news came down Thursday, I, um, of course, so with the, the passing of Dusty Rhodes. I know uh, a lot of, we don't have anybody that, that, that attended, uh, but I, I heard a lot of news uh, from friends that did. We couldn't, none of us here could get tickets. <laughs> but uh, NXT was actually here in Pittsburgh, and, and if those don't know, uh, Dusty was really instrumental in a lot of the training, and I think maybe writing, booking, perhaps, creative a lot uh, in NXT with a lot of the those uh, uh, guys down there, and even even over the f- few years, guys in TNA uh, a few years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, influence on so many people in the industry. And I know uh, they did. You know, there was all the media was canceled for the day, so they didn't, you know nobody even got a chance to talk to uh, all the people there. They they did a ten bell. Um, thank you, Rob Brown. He actually sent me the audio from the ten bell uh, from 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 the event, and uh, and of course we had uh, everybody coming out doing ten bell at Money in the Bank. And uh, we had a celebration, celebrating Dusty uh, special on WWE Network last night, um, which, you know, again, it's awesome they have the network and they have the room to do something like that. You know, they did the same thing with the Warrior. They actually had a, they actually had a Warrior week because they had a lot of stuff in the hopper, I think, already. Um, so there was there's a lot of room for them to really kind of give a proper send off, at least on TV for the fans, for everything else. And uh, and, and it was really, really cool to see that kind of thing. Um, I thought just in general, uh, you know, kind of go on, go around, talk about Dusty. Uh, for me, I mostly knew Polka Dot Dusty, and I think a lot of us maybe here have. You know, I was a WWF fan through and through for years and years and years. Didn't even know about this whole other thing, the NWA, WCW, for a while. And, uh, and, uh, it, it, and it, he was one of the characters that definitely got you excited, right? He was a Taka. He had Sweet Sapphire. And uh, and as I, as I talked about, I did a, ma- a special mayhem minute last week, where uh, I, you know, I discussed. I mean, the biggest thing that sticks in my head is that you know uh, I, I think it was a Saturday night's main event. I think I rewatched it recently, actually, where he's talking about Americana and he's talking about ground beef and he's got the ground beef in his hand and says, "This is pure ground Americana." You know, I mean, that's this kind of stuff stuff that sticks in my head. And it's all the stuff from the video releases uh, that I watched with him as well, and very very fun. It was fun. It was just absolutely fun, and not even knowing like all the rest of it, and uh, and 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 seeing his story is is pretty incredible too. Uh, either via that special last night on WWE Network, or just watching a lot of that was from from the documentary that they did on him a few years ago, which I highly recommend. Uh, that the the Hall of Fame, the rivalries with uh, Ric Flair, um, that's that's your uh, that's your wrestling history bible right there. And I think you guys need to uh, uh, check it out if you haven't already. Uh, so, uh, so if you got thoughts in the chat room, if you're joining here at live at wrestlingmamshow.com, uh, I thought we'd go around. You know, who else has any memories, any thoughts uh, about Dusty's passing uh, they'd like to share here before we move on to some some fun stuff? Yeah, I got one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the you mentioned polka dot Dusty, which uh, one of the first things I knew about Dusty Rhodes was that Vince hired him and put him in the polka dots uh, basically because he was a competitor. He was the competition. You know what I mean? He was like, I'm going to mm-hmm. put him with a ridiculous gimmick. And he was the top guy. Uh, he was the top guy over there on, in NWA and all the other heads. Right. And he brought him in. He's like, I'm going to make him a joke. And he took that. He took this ridiculous thing and he got over with it. And I feel like they, they overlooked the fact that, I mean, Dusty Rhodes, non polka dot Dusty Rhodes was a little ridiculous and a little absurd and a little, you know, a little crazy before that. Um, and it wasn't just, you know, saying goofy things and doing goofy stuff. The matches that he had were excellent, but also crazy and also violent. And, and I mean, Dusty has always been a bigger guy and, it was the same with his personality. You know what I mean? He had to have a larger than life personality to go with his physique and it worked for him. You know what I mean? He, he was in the, uh, you know, in the title picture in the main event for so long. And, uh, he was just a, a mainstay for professional wrestling fans for so long for people like us to be sitting and talk about him. And he was old enough to be someone that our parents watched and possibly even our grandparents watched. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To stay relevant for that long um, speaks volumes. I didn't realize until watching last night how many of his quotes he could have put on an inspirational like, posters because he was just all about being the best you can be and you can succeed no matter what. And it was just like 
I can do anything now. Just listening to him talk and listening and say what he said, it was just like, I can do anything. You know, this guy believes in me no matter what the circumstance is, which I thought was really cool. And, and I mean, I know, like, uh, it was Macho Man who got me into wrestling, but the first DVD I really watched and watched repeatedly was SummerSlam 89. And reflecting on Dusty, he was the first guy who I memorized the full promo from because he was just – he had a match with the Honky Tonk Man, which was – like in the annals of Dusty Rhodes matches, you'll never see this on a best of. Mm-hmm. But it's just one of those things that I, as a young, impressionable kid, listened to him talk and just his cadence, his excitement, uh, the, the way he phrased everything, he was so amped about – a match against a guy named the Honky Tonk Man who was essentially an Elvis impersonator. And, like, he had on a police hat and he had a nightstick. So I think he was kind of trying to channel his Hard Times promo when he was doing it. But it was just so awesome. And also, I know everyone thinks that Vince put him in the polka dots as a a work or as as a rib, but they gave him the best theme song. (laughs) <laughs> they gave him the, like if if Vince was trying to make him a joke, he failed miserably at that.